Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Today, Mitchell writes in asking about how uh, I learned operating system development. Like, what were some resources or methods that I used? Um, did I learn it from some work I did at some job? Uh, or did I just uh, poke my head into operating system repositories on GitHub and learn that way? <clears throat> So that's, a, that's an interesting question, because it's something I get asked all the time. Um, so let me tell you that I learned operating system a kind of an unusual way, a bit backwards. Um, I worked on an x86 PC emulator for many years. Uh, it was my pet project. It's called Computron right now. It's gone through some name changes, but uh, it's on my GitHub if you want to check it out. It's, I never made a release of it because it was always just a, like a pet hobby project that I used to teach myself about um, things. Uh, and uh, I started doing it when I was 18, so it's like it's been there in my life for a long time. Uh, and parts of it are really, <laughs> really crappy still. Um, but <clears throat> basically working on this um, taught me so much about how x86 computers work, how um, 386 multitasking works, how the typical like generic standard PC hardware works. Um, so I knew a lot about all of those things. And um, with that knowledge, implementing an emulator uh, or an operating system, like a basic multitasking operating system, is not terribly difficult because um, you know, I'd already seen from the computer's perspective what other systems do, because I had like DOS and Windows and Linux and, and like these different systems running on my fake hardware. So um, I, I knew what the, what the software was supposed to ask the fake hardware to, to get multitasking and stuff like that going. So that really, really helped me. And uh, when I decided to just start writing an operating system, then I didn't really have to stop and learn about things that much, um, at least not in the beginning, which was, I guess, probably very helpful. Um, but then, of course, there's so much more to operating systems than, you know, assembly and kernels and stuff, <clears throat> even though that's what a lot of people think that it's about. Um, it's really not. It's so much more than that. And uh, I would say that when I was uh, 20, or very early 20s, then I worked on the KDE project for a while. And that was really, really helpful for me. And not just in learning C++, but also in taking off this sort of, um, like this intimidation veil uh, or intimidation halo or whatever around, <clears throat> um, around big software, like big desktop software. Because prior to that, um, I had only ever used desktop software and never actually made any of my own, really, um, certainly not in C++. I mean, I'd, I'd use Visual Basic a bunch, but I never wrote any desktop C++, so I didn't really know much about it. And like throwing myself into KDE and just uh, working on fixing bugs in all kinds of components and everything, it exposed me to so many different styles of programming. Um, so many different patterns and, and like ways of doing things and it was extremely uh, helpful to me because it totally took away that intimidation halo that um, that I perceived I think a lot of a lot of young programmers uh, tend to perceive around things that like seem complicated or seem difficult um, it's really really good if you feel that something seems like it would be difficult to actually go and mess with it because things are never as difficult as you think they are and they're never as complicated as you suspect they might be and I think sometimes like culturally we we can do this thing that sort of worsens this that we can sort of play up how complicated something is or how messy something is um, just as a way of like talking with each other we're like oh yeah this thing is so uh, hairy like uh, Oh, like it has so many workarounds, and da, 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 you know, and it's sort of like this. <laughs> There's just this way that we exaggerate for banter as programmers, and the truth is that um, 
I mean, you, you learn this with experience, but, but like I can tell you right away that things are never as complicated as people pretend that they are. Uh, and and you, can, you can find that out for yourself by just going and picking something apart that you thought was complicated, and I promise you, uh, it, will be, it will be enlightening. Anyways, uh, so I was doing that with KDE, and um, I had the aforementioned enlightenment there. And um, then when I started working on Qt professionally later on, then um, that taught me how graphical frameworks are put together. And just uh, I got this appreciation for how frameworks are put together in general. And um, the Qt project has like this strong focus on ABI compatibility. So I learned about things like that. And I learned about API design and how to think about um, think about object models, um, ownerships, stuff like that. Things like things that I still consider to be like the most important aspects of, of programming. I guess I started really learning them at Qt because I was exposed to them in the KDE project. Like there were object models and, and ownerships and things um, in KDE, but like I was not experienced enough at that time to understand these things, what they were, but I was still able to like internalize a lot of things just by being exposed to them, even though I couldn't articulate what they were. So that's why I've like advocated in, in earlier videos that exposing yourself to um, open source software is, is really, really good for you just because you're exposing yourself to programming patterns that you don't know yet. <clears throat> um, so Qt was really good for learning GUI frameworks, and, and like Qt is the main inspiration for sure for the GUI framework in Serenity called LibGUI. It's uh, it's very cute. Like if you if you've ever done Qt programming, then you would feel right at home, I think. Um, and I guess then after that, I worked on WebKit for many many years, and browser engines and browsers really are not different or not terribly different from operating systems because you have like crazy inputs coming from all over the world and and like a lot of it is untrusted and then you have a user who's like constantly uh, interacting with you and like wants certain things right now <clears throat> um, and that could describe an operating system or a browser so um, working on a browser engine it it got me into this, I guess, into the right mindset for operating system development. A lot of people say that the browser is the new OS. I don't necessarily agree with that because browser is, uh, he's like, he has so little to worry about compared to an operating system when it comes to like um, hardware interference. But maybe, maybe I'm just old fashioned with that. Anyways. Um, working on WebKit, it really made me understand systems programming the way that I do today, because WebKit is, is really like, um, it's like a collection of smaller systems that compose a larger system. Um, so you have like a, like a JavaScript engine, it's like a system of its own, and then there's a layout engine, and then there's like this networking um, engine and like caches and, and resource management and like there's a there's like a media engine in there and there's all kinds of things going on in there um, and there are all these little systems and they all um, work together to implement the web right the web functionality and just uh, just being in that environment and being exposed to that for so many years it just um, it gave me um, an intuitive understanding of computer systems, I think. Uh, it's, not, it's not necessarily like the best understanding, it's just the one that I have. And it's the, it's the thing that I draw from when I, when I build Serenity now, is that I just draw from, from this understanding that I have of computer systems that I gained from browsers. Um, but I guess I should mention also that I've been a computer enthusiast my whole life, and I've been a Unix enthusiast ever since I um, first got into running Slackware.
back in the 90s and I had a I had a Windows relapse but I eventually came back to Linux again um, and of course I spent many years on the on Mac OS as well which you know I, I definitely have to give credit to to Mac OS because uh, I spent I don't know seven years on Mac OS and I learned a lot of good things from that and especially working with people um, like my coworkers at at um, these big projects there were a lot of smart people that worked on these projects and I learned a lot from them I I, I have to give credit so like I, I wouldn't be half the programmer I am today if I haven't gone out and interacted with people and learned from those who were way 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 ahead of me um, skill wise and experience wise so I think that's that was really important but uh, I guess I'm kind of getting uh, getting into like this general territories here and, and not so much answering the specific question so like what were some resources or methods that I used I, I really I didn't read like operating system tutorials really I, I I've I've been on the OS Dev wiki, but I'm not a like a frequent reader or anything. Uh, I find that it's usually easier for me to just try to do something myself first, and then if I just can't get the thing to work right or if something doesn't seem right, um, then I can go in and and look for help elsewhere. But it's just in, in my personal experience, I just have much better success uh, trying to do things myself first before I look up how to do them. And yeah, uh, I think uh, Dan Boyd on IRC calls it like uh, calls it my my clean room method. <laughs> like uh, try to build a thing yourself first. That way uh, you're tainted by your own implementation before you before you look at anyone else's. Uh, I don't know, it works for me. Um, and, oh yeah, and there was this part of the question, like, did I just uh, look into other operating systems and work things out that way? Not really. Um, I, don't, I don't look much at other operating systems. Um, the thing that I would look up sometimes is like how someone implemented a driver for some hardware just because um, that's something that like I, I, I developed primarily with QEMU right as my target the emulator so it has a tendency of being very forgiving when it comes to hardware emulation like if you do something wrong then QEMU would just be like yeah, well, you know, close enough, and it will just let you <laughs> do the thing. And then, uh, as we're finding recently, <clears throat> uh, as uh, as uh, as my man Conrad is is getting Serenity further and further along on real hardware, um, we're finding that a lot of the stuff that QEMU does is like entirely too forgiving, right? And uh, real hardware behaves differently. So for things like that, it's it's really helpful to to look at existing drivers sometimes but I still maintain that it is best to to try to do your own implementation first before you before you look at other people's anyways I don't know if this answers the question at all but I guess this is how I how I learned operating system development um, I think maybe the main thing I would I would tell people is that operating system development is really just systems development which um, comes in many, many forms. And don't mythologize operating system development and don't mythologize kernels because it doesn't do you any favors. It's just, uh, it's just another program. It's just another system. And you can build systems because you just have to build uh, parts and then get the parts to talk to each other. And um, there's no specific part that you have to start with. I mean, parts have dependencies, but you can start anywhere. Uh, and um, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always really excited when I hear from people that say that uh, they're getting into operating system development because of me or because of like seeing my videos and getting excited about it. Um, 
and that that's super awesome because it doesn't have to be scary. Like it's, there's nothing scary or inherently difficult or dangerous about operating system development. It's just programming, and programming is fun. So <laughs> I, I hope everyone uh, everyone is having fun programming. Yeah. Anyways, I'm I'm about to uh, arrive at work here soon, so I'm gonna have to um, cut it short or <laughs> cut myself off. So I will say thank you for sending in the questions and for all the other questions that are in queue. Um, I'll get to them um, and keep keep sending more questions because because this is awesome being able to talk about subjects that um, that are so interesting and and hopefully interest people. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.